It's time to take a look at Ceres, the dwarf planet. If you're a space enthusiast, it's hard to watch or read something that doesn't bring up Ceres. From science fiction shows to novels, Ceres always seems to play a role in human expansion inside our solar system. But how realistic is this vision, and what is Ceres anyways? Ceres is technically a dwarf planet, which essentially means it directly orbits our sun but isn't quite big enough to be classified as a true planet. For context, it's about one third the size of our moon. There are about five officially recognized dwarf planets in our solar system, but also dozens more being considered, so this list is a bit fluid. It's thought that there are potentially thousands of dwarf planets in orbit around our sun. Due to its small size, Ceres is pretty difficult to see from Earth, even with a telescope. In fact, we didn't even really know much about this dwarf planet until NASA sent a spacecraft there in 2015. What we did find out was pretty incredible though. The surface of Ceres is actually a mixture of ice, minerals, and occasionally a liquid brine. Although it's unlikely that Ceres is a full ocean under its surface like, say, Ganymede or maybe Europa. This brine sometimes reaches the surface and erupts, forming what are called cryovolcanoes. This is the closest example of this phenomenon to Earth, and also a potential area for discovering life outside of our planet. Ceres orbits our Sun every 4.6 years, between Mars and Jupiter, inside of the asteroid belt, with the dwarf planet making up about 40% of the entire mass of these asteroids. This high mass means Ceres is nearly large enough to reach hydrostatic equilibrium. This is the balance between the inward pull of gravity and the outward pressure from an object, which is what allows for more complex things in our universe to hold together, like planets and stars and even galaxy clusters. One sign of this balance being achieved is a symmetrical rounded shape, usually due to rotation. This is why Sirius has such a uniformly round planet or moon-like shape compared to the surrounding asteroids. Hydrostatic equilibrium is also the main distinguishing factor between dwarf planets like Ceres and full planets like our own Earth. One of the most interesting facts about Ceres is that it technically has the most water in our inner solar system besides Earth. Outside of discovering life in this water, it also makes Ceres a potential future site for human expansion in our solar system. And well, still mostly science fiction at this point, Ceres has quite a bit going for it when it comes to habitability. It's relatively close to Earth, it's rich in nitrogen, and it's filled with useful raw materials. Most proposals involve building a space station habitat of some kind around this dwarf planet. These structures could then be spun around Ceres to achieve artificial gravity. This could also be a great way to reduce health risks of low gravity when compared to environments like Mars. Ceres' location in the asteroid belt could also prove to be an important stepping stone for missions to the outer solar system. All of this is just theory though, and the first step is finding out more about this dwarf planet, especially what's going on beneath the surface. There are some proposals to send an orbiter in the late 2030s, but nothing concrete yet. So what do you think? Will humans one day explore and colonize this dwarf planet? Let us know in the comments.